Okay, good morning everyone. It's very cold today, but however, we are here, so we will continue with our radiology club today with uh, science and radiology and the continuation of the uh, bone marrow changes of the spine on MRI. First of all, Dr. Dina will present the science and radiology. Does anyone have an idea about what radiological sign is this? It's called CT halo sign. CT halo sign means there is a ground glass attenuation that surrounds any pulmonary nodules or a mass. And it's a feature that's seen on a lung window setting, special, especially in a high resolution CT scan. Now, when they proposed this uh, sign at first, they said this is a specific sign for uh, invasive aspergillosis. But on further study or realization of this uh, sign, they found there are more other causes. Other causes of this uh, is divided into three categories. It is hemorrhage, a tumor infiltration, or inflammatory process. Uh, so when we saw any nodule that uh, sound by any uh, ground glass attenuation, we should call the CT scan, and there is uh, another funny name, it is called the fried egg sign as well. Okay, so the differential diagnosis of this scan through a uh, thoughtful study, I found it has a broader entities, so it's either infectious or neoblastics or due to inflammatory disease. Start with the infectious causes. As I mentioned, the most common cause in, is aspergillosis, especially in immune compromised patients. So if you have any patient uh, that have HIV or leukemic patient and we found this pulmonary nodule with ground gland or hollow sign, we should suspect aspergillosis. And it also can be seen other fungal infections. It can also be in septic emboli. It can also be seen in some type of mycobacterium, like TB or mycobacterium avium, and in some bacterial infections, as well as viral infections, which we'll see on the next slides. So this patient uh, saw uh, nodules in the epices of both lung fields, and um, it's both of them have show um, a hello CT sign, and uh, this patient is looking at patients. And this is also another CT scan with this hello sign. Now they said in the literature that uh, finding this sign, it is more specific or more sensitive than the serological testing itself. So also this is a case of septic emboli. It has uh, multiple nodules and offer different shape. But as you can see here, this is the uh, glural-based nodule. Uh, also, it's around slightly by ground glass attenuation. Uh, also, this is case of cytobigalovirus. As you can see through this arrow, um, there is a small, tiny nodules, and also it's surrounded slightly by a CT halo sign as well, mainly in the right loop of the lung. Now, let's go to the new plastic. Uh, the most common type, uh, the primary tumor that causes this is the bronchoalveolar carcinoma, or what is called the newly is invasive adenocarcinoma. Now, if we see the such nodule in patient with normal immunity, we should suspect this type of tumor. It also can be seen in other types like sequema, scaposi, or pulmonary lymphoma, although we all know that both of these, uh, all of these tumors have another features. Now, the most common metastasis that show this type of uh, sign is the hemorrhagic type, because the tumor tend to hemorrhage around itself and cause this sign, mainly the induced sarcoma, choriocarcinoma, melanoma, as well as metastasis from the GIT adenoma. So this is case of bronchoalveolar carcinoma, and as you can see, this is two nodules, and um, one of them is um, on the right side, it's uh, a satellite lesion surrounded by a halo sign as well, and the other side as well, nearly it's, let's say, blur based and it's all surrounded by a halo sign as well. Okay, this is case of non-primary melanoma, and it's presented as well with this uh, single nodule with the halo sign. Uh, this is another... Is hemorrhagic yes, hemorrhagic, exactly. Also, this is case of multiple color carcinoma, and it's slightly, you can see there's, especially in the anterior lip. Okay, um, does not show, okay. Uh, now let's go to the inflammatory type. Uh, one of the causes of its uh, granulitis uh, polyangitis, which is known as Wigner. Now we all know that the gavita region is the most common type, but sometimes it can present with this hollow sign. Uh, sometimes it's an ophenic lung disease, sometimes in endometriosis, and sometimes in organizing pneumonia. And uh, we all know organizing pneumonia has another sign. Does anyone have an idea what this sign? Exactly. 
And another case is hypersensitivity neonitis. If the patient, those who are dealing with birds as well, sometimes it present with this nodules surrounded, or sometimes it's more diffuse. Sometimes also an iatrogenic lung disease or any pulmonary pseudoaneurysm. So this is case of Wigner. Uh, it has another slides with cavitary nodules, but one of these nodules show a CT, show a CT hollow sign. Uh, this is case of uh, some uh, simple pulmonary eosinophilia as well. As you can see, um, there is multiple nodules with a hollow sign. Okay, now as mentioned, uh, just for a yani, comparison, as there is a hollow sign, there is a reverse hollow sign in which, in which the ground glass attenuation is inside the nodules, not surrounding it. And as our friend said, it is specific sign for cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. Now, as I thought this sign was only seen in CT scan, but um, I found, which we studied today, CT, it also can be seen in other modalities of uh, imaging, such as in mammography, um, which is a sign for, this is a benign lesion, either it is cystic or uh, more benign lesion. Also, it's seen in ultrasound, which Except is- In mammography, the halo is lucent. Lucent, yes, lucent, yes. Um, and also in ultrasound, uh, sometimes hypoechoic, uh, or high, high yani low agenicity, echogenicity surrounding any nodule or any mass uh, sign of metastasis or suspicious, food. this is a malignancy, it's called Bildi. That's it, thank you very much. Thank you, very nice presentation, very good examples and any questions? Okay, so now we will continue with Dr. Serbest from yesterday about the bone marrow changes in the spinal cord. I'm not sure. 40? Okay. This one? Yes. Good. زمان عاد بنسبة أنا إن البرايمري كان يعني بشيء كم زور ما ولا فيزيك زبو هو سؤالك شتى شيء هو حتى خارج المحاضرة شو بسيار كان يعني لا قدر تعقد تاني أو إلى سكنة سكان تينا جيش تيا شتك ما شاء الله Good morning just to remember the table we are discussing the distribution of bone marrow signal abnormality we said uh, it may be diffuse or multifocal or focal. I think we have discussed marrow reconversion and uh, some of the myeloproliferative uh, disorder. Today we talk about multifocal lesion, which are multifocal metastasis, multi uh, multifocal uh, multiple myeloma, and lymphoma. All these three could occur, metastasis, myeloma, and lymphoma, could occur in a focal form focal, focal uh, abnormality may be tumor, as uh, focal multiple myeloma called uh, plasma cytoma, solitary metastasis, and lymphoma, or primary tumor. Among the primary tumor, we only discuss the hemangioma. Other cause may be radiation, fr fracture, degenerative change, infection, and osteonecrosis. So we start with the multiple uh, myeloma. We said that multiple myeloma could be solitary, which is called uh, plasma cytoma. Uh, median age of a presentation of multiple myeloma is an uh, elderly, uh, about 65 years, but less than 10% can be before 40 years old. Uh, we said it arise from plasma cell. Uh, it has uh, the predilection to involve the axial skeleton. Uh, for example, about half of cases spine involved, whether skull, pelvis, and ribs, each involved about one third of cases, and they are least common in the proximal humerus and uh, femur bones. Uh, the whole the hallmark of uh, multiple myeloma is excessive osteolysis, which on conventional uh, radiography produces uh, the what is called uh, 
punched out lesion punched out it means well defined sharply defined uh, lesions this is called uh, punched out lesion on uh, x-ray the focal form of multiple myeloma is uh, plasma cytoma plasma cytoma is a solitary lesion uh, expansal lytic destru dis destructive lesion for example we discussed uh, this uh, picture this is uh, plasma cytoma arising from the left uh, side of the sacrum it's t1 hypo steer uh, highlighted and uh, it is intensely enhanced after contrast enhancement this is again a plasma cytoma uh, involved uh, single uh, vertebra and expansal has uh, destructed the cortex we see this uh, linear hypo intense area which is called uh, see this uh, picture this is t2 this is a normal vertebra the slide below this will appear hyper intense uh, mass uh, there there are multiple curvilinear low signal area within the lesion they they give rise to the appearance which is called mini brain appearance it means sulci in the brain mini brain appearance see another slide and returning to normal so this is a characteristic sign of plasma cytoma this uh, curvilinear low intensity lines the multiple myeloma can be diffuse or multifocal this picture shows all types of multiple myeloma this is diffuse we see uh, our approach this uh, spine is normal or abnormal it is abnormal we see it is not the uh, the signal of fat whether is it less than or more than the disc it is less than the, the disc so it is uh, pathological it is a diffuse form of multiple myeloma the, or multiple myeloma could be multifocal multifocal could be either micronodular as we see these are multiple nodules or macronodular these these uh, large nodules or mix it macro or micro so three types of multiple myeloma either focal plasma cytoma or diffuse but it cannot be differentiated from other form of myeloclofrit disorder for example leukemia myelofibrosis and this is a normal spine okay this also multifocal or steeple path pattern of multiple myeloma 65 year old man uh, by the way all myeloproliferative disorder yani multiple myeloma leukemia myelofibrosis all involve the posterior element you see this is steeple pattern or multifocal pattern leukemia one of the myeloproliferative disorder is leukemia Le leukemia usually has uh, any diffuse pattern not like uh, multiple myeloma to be multifocal or focal this is t1 we see uh, just yani, as as uh, other uh, pathology we see the signal of the uh, of the spine is on t1 is less than this the disc so this is pathological and this is t2 and diffuse form in this case we cannot differentiate uh, between leukemia and diffuse myeloma this is multiple myeloma diffuse form and this is leukemia diffuse form we cannot differentiate between them uh, so we say that to reach the diagnosis uh, other lab tests are important and history so to reach the diagnosis suggestive of myeloproliferative disorder yes myeloproliferative disorder for example multiple myeloma yes myeloma multiple myeloma leukemia we say plasma cell multiple myeloma myeloma ybc leukemia rbc <coughs> polycythemia rubra vera and myelofibrosis myelofibrosis it is either primary myelofibrosis it means collagen fibrosis of the marrow whether it is primary occur or it is reactive fibrosis after other marrow myeloproliferative disorder it means there may be multiple myeloma with myelofibrosis leukemia with myelofibrosis we see again the signal on the t1 is lower than the disc so this is pathological this is t1 and this is t2 on coronal again low signal and we see huge splenomegaly 
which usually occur in, in a patient with myelofibrosis. Uh, we shift to multifocal abnormality in the bone marrow. You said multi metastasis, multiple myeloma, and lymphoma. Metastasis can be solitary or multiple. But when metastasis is multiple, it is not like myeloproliferative disorder. It is, it is not diffuse. It is discrete, yani focal discrete lesion. Okay? Uh, this patient, uh, 55 here, uh, with metastatic breast cancer, we see both type of metastasis. Uh, you know breast can cause lytic and uh, osteoblastic metastasis. Uh, this T1, T2, and still. We see this is low signal on T1, high signal on T2. So this, this is lytic metastasis and highlighted on steer. Well, while this low on T1, low on T2, and again low on steer. So this is osteoblastic metastasis. Osteoblastic appear low on all uh, sequences. This is a case of uh, <coughs> metastatic prostate car carcinoma, usually cause uh, osteoblastic metastasis. You see T1, T2, steer, and uh, again, axial T2. Uh, low, multiple, uh, numerous, uh, low signal, lesion. Uh, one of the important, uh, we say it, whether the posterior element is involved or not to reach the diagnosis. Metastasis usually involve the posterior element. You see pedicles involved, transverse process involved also. Uh, Sometimes the metastatic lesion could be expensile and uh, destructive. Uh, we see in this case, the, there is com uh, collapse of the vertebra with the posterior bulging and pressure on the spinal cord. We come to it on the types of fracture. Uh, in the case of uh, pathological fracture, usually there is uh, bulging of the posterior margin of the vertebra and there is no fracture line. It's <coughs> important to differentiate from osteoporotic fracture and from traumatic fracture. There is no fracture line because all the trabeculae has destroyed and infiltrated. There is no trabeculae. Whenever there is hollow sign, and the lesion surrounded by uh, high signal uh, uh, curvilinear uh, margin, it is highly indicator of metastasis, whether on T1 or T2. Uh, while bullous eye sign, a sign of benignancy and uh, indicate red marrow. We see these two lesion, hypo signal, there is a small high, uh, hyper intense uh, dot inside it. This is not metastasis, and usually indicate this is benign process. Other form of multifocal lesion is lymphoma. Lymphoma can be focal or multifocal. Usually lymphoma is hypo on T1, but because of its hypercellularity, the T2 is variable. Sometime may be hypo intense on T2. One of the important feature of lymphoma is that it doesn't cause cortical destruction in the reverse of uh, metastasis, but instead it causes permeation, permeating through the cortex and into the surrounding soft tissue. You see, this soft tissue is involved. This is T2. Maybe steer, this is steer. Uh, T2 fast suppression. Uh, you see that the, all the vertebra are involved and there is soft tissue component without destruction of the cortex. Uh, we said the lymphoma can be focal or multifocal. We see in this case, this, is, this vertebra is diffusely involved low in T1, high in T2, and there are other multiple lesions, you see, hypo on T1, hyper on T2, and surrounded by uh, edema, and uh, they are like target lesion, okay? And they are suppressed on the steer, still there is the edema surrounding. Uh, lymphoma is one w when it is uh, any focal, it's one of the causes of ivory vertebra. Ivory vertebra is uh, completely dense vertebra. Uh, other differential diagnosis include <coughs> this is any uh, summarize it in the synonym lymph, lymphoma, infection, metastasis, Paget disease, antimangioma. These are the causes of ivory vertebra. Uh, one 
uh, of the causes of focal abnormality in the bone marrow, we say tumor, primary tumor we say, aneurysmal bone cyst, giant cell tumor, chordoma, and hemangioma. We discuss only hemangioma because we frequently see it. There are sometimes atypical hemangioma we discuss. Uh, hemangioma are slow growing, benign neoplasm. They are, I mean, they are thin walled blood vessel, slow flow, of slow flow, and uh, bony trabeculae. The important is that it also contains variable amount of fat. Because of this fat content, that is why uh, hemangioma usually appear hyper intense on T1 and hyper intense on T2. And this is on axial. But we see some stippled, <coughs> stippled appearance, munakata. This is because of bone trabeculae. This is important to recognize in mangioma. Uh, this, uh, this is the blood, blood, and this is the abnormal trabeculae. Uh, this is the normal trabeculae, which gives the hemangioma polka dot appearance. Polka dot, it means multiple filled uh, circles we see on the CT, and this and gives the, uh, give the hemangioma striated appearance on uh, X-ray. And uh, one of the possible presentation is, we say, is ivory vertebra, and it could cause ivory vertebra also. What is important is atypical hemangioma. What is atypical hemangioma? When, when the hemangioma contain uh, little amount of fat, at that time it doesn't appear hyper intense on T1 and T2. It, uh, there is no fat and it contain blood. The blood is slow flowing. It, uh, uh, reacted feature like 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 uh, cyst or mass low on T1 high on T2 at that time it may be difficult to differentiate from metastasis you see this is uh, T2 uh, T1 not shown but uh, sure T1 is low and T2 is high you should uh, consider this is not metastasis so we do chemical shift uh, artifact chemical shift uh, Victoria van Gotmansia when there is microscopic amount of fat and this is, there is no large amount of fat to be suppressed by steer so we do chemical shift artifact we do chemical shift artifact and uh, in, uh, in face and out face there will be drop out of the signal on out face so if it is metastasis taban it doesn't drop out uh, this is another case this t1 t2 not shown but uh, sure t2 is high t1 is low this may indicate we cannot differentiate this, for example, from lymphoma. So, still it is uh, suppressed, suppressed yani, markedly. Normal hemangioma not suppressing like that. Uh, so, sorry, this is still uh, highlighted. Uh, sorry, on fat suppression, on fat suppression, hemangioma not suppressed markedly because uh, contain trabeculae and the other tissue. This is still highlighted. At the, that time, uh, we cannot differentiate this from lymphoma, from metastasis. And uh, hemangioma taban, enhances markedly because of its high vascularity. But simply, we can differentiate this by CT scan, give us the polka dot appearance. Would you report this as a hemangioma? Like, I have received. <laughs> this is, I have received like that. Yani, I, it's I not know, edited. But in, in, in real Why not? Practice, uh, I have. I have received the this picture from a, 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 an article just in discuss, in discussing the atypical pattern of human uh -huh. The article. Yes, yes, come on. It's good, good idea. Nice. Uh, or imangioma could be aggressive. <coughs> we see this uh, T2, high signal. This is uh, <coughs> epidural component. We see how it is the epidural component, how enhanced on T1 with mm -hmm. contrast. But simply, we on the CT, we see the polka dot appearance. And uh, on angiography, you see uh, the, the vascular nature of the mass. Uh, Sometimes there is just focal fatty replacement. Yeah, 
just uh, like a mass, this is uh, low, high in T1 and high on T2. If you have not other, if you have no other sequence, we say this is hemangioma. Although both of them are benign, but uh, on steer, there is a marked uh, decreased signal of the focal fatty replacement. While if it is hemangioma, it will not uh, suppress like that because it is all <coughs> fat. This is focal fatty replacement. So if you see, uh, if you see, uh, yeah. So if you see this kind of lesion on the T2 fat side, it is hemangioma. It can be hemangioma. Don't be any don't to know it is not suppressed on T2 fat side. So it might not be a hemangioma. No, it is. In fact, it's the typical thing of hemangioma. It will not be completely suppressed on fat side. Yes. Again, aggressive hemangioma. This is T2, or T2 fast separation. Uh, and uh, this is polka dot on uh, axial MRI, and polka dot appearance on CT. Mm -hmm. You can see the soft tissue extension, obviously, here in the CT on the uh, base. Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, radiation. Radiation can cause uh, signal change in the bone marrow. <laughs> it usually starts after six weeks. Before mm -hmm. six weeks, there is no fatty change. There will be uh, uh, segmental and uh, well uh, demarcated area with uh, margins at the edges of radiation portal. When the when the patient receives less than 30 gray, it is temporary, but become permanent uh, if the more than 30 gray uh, receive it. <coughs> we see this high signal of uh, this. Uh, maybe this there may be metastatic. Uh, this is a 32 years old man, but it was not mentioned uh, how, so what type of... So the, the parts that are replaced by fat are the parts that are radiated. Radiated, yes. yes. What other finding do you see? There are many vertebrae also markedly high Red marrow reconversion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually occur in patients with malignancy. It is very common. Mm -hmm. Most of them have uh, anemia. We see it is uh, less than uh, the signal of fat, but more than uh, the signal of disc. So this is red marrow reconversion. Uh, this again, uh, uh, the patient received uh, radiation for the pelvis, uh, I think. We see the fatty change in the sacrum and uh, L5. Fracture is uh, important. Uh, the MRI characteristic of fracture to this uh, presentation depend on whether the fracture is acute or chronic and uh, on the underlying cause. Usually there's, there are three, ta three causes, whether pathologic, pathological, usually we mean metastasis, any underlying metastasis or malignancy, or osteoporotic or traumatic. Acute, acute fracture could be caused by one of these causes neoplastic infiltration, it means pathological, osteoporosis, or trauma. There are four features to be considered to, to define what uh, it is the cause of fracture. Uh, first is whether the marrow is replaced or, or not, it means infiltrated or not. Contour of the vertebral body, as we said, on the, mali on the when there is metastasis, it causes bulging or not. Number of lesion important and whether the posterior elements are involved or not. So, marrow replacement, contour, number, and posterior element. When there is pathological fracture, when there is metastasis, for example, marrow replaced, yes. Number, usually they are multiple. Contour, it causes expansion of the vertebral body with convex anterior and posterior cortical margin. Posterior element is involved, yes. There is involvement of the pedicle and uh, transverse process and sometimes lamina. Sometimes, unusual, when there is pathological fracture, usually there may be an associated soft tissue mass. Mm -hmm. We see this patient with multiple metastases. There are some an expensile lesion, and this is uh, L1, L2, T11, and, see, and we see uh, pathological fracture of uh, T12. We see it is bulged uh, and uh, infiltrated, the, the vertebra is infiltrated and uh, compressing the spinal cord. We see that the pedicle also involved, and this is uh, T2 parasagital again, but there is, usually there is no fracture line. 
because the trabeculae are all destroyed. And it is mentioned that fracture doesn't occur when there is metastasis until late in the disease, when all <coughs> trabeculae are infiltrated and destructed. That is why th there is no fracture line. And uh, we showed this, this again. Uh, there is decreased height, uh, posterior bulging, and no fracture line. This is regarded as pathological fracture. We discussed about fracture line. Uh, first, uh, we said the cause of acute fracture may be infiltrative or uh, pathological. Second, uh, there may be compression, and when there is osteoporosis, underlying osteoporosis. When there is osteoporosis, the osteoporosis can cause acute fracture or chronic fracture. When there is acute fracture, uh, usually there is sparing or preservation of the concave margin. There is usually anterior uh, wedging, anterior wedging of the decreased height and anterior wedging, and we see the fracture line, huh? this hypotense line. So this is acute benign compression fracture. While when the patient with th this acute fracture when become chronic, when become chronic, few changes will happen. First, uh, the fracture line will uh, will uh, disappear. We see these are all fracture. Also, osteoporotic fracture can cause concave and uh, superior and inferior end plate. Uh, so, in the case of chronic, uh, the fracture line uh, will be lost, and there is no edema. And but this is uh, there is acute uh, on chronic uh, trauma. We see again fracture line, fracture line. So this is a patient with osteoporosis, uh, she has two type of uh, fracture, chronic and acute at the same time. Third uh, cause of fracture is uh, trauma. Uh, burst fracture, yani mostly trauma, but sometimes sometime osteoporosis can cause uh, yani burst type fracture. Burst type is yani morphologically is like a pathological fracture. It means there is posterior bulging, a decreased height, but it differentiated from pathological fracture by the line. You see the line. While in uh, uh, pathological okay. fracture, there is no line. Yes. So, in, in uh, short, pathological fracture, there is uh, posterior bulging. Burst trauma, also posterior bulging. But pathological fracture, no line. Burst fracture, there is line. Acute osteoporotic fracture, uh, there is uh, no bulging, preservation of the concave uh, border. <coughs> but differentiated from chronic by the line. In acute, there is line. In chronic, there is no line. Degenerative change of the spine. You have modic 1, 2, and 3. Modic is edema and reparative process. It appears low T1, high T2. Modic 2, when there is conversion to marrow, it becomes high T1, high T2. And modic 3, when it becomes sclerotic, there is low T1, low T2. Uh, Sometimes there may be difficulty with differentiating the modic one with the infection, but in modic one, this is usually desiccated. Desiccated, it means dry and show low T2 signal on modic one. While in infection, there's increased fluid and high T2 signal of the desic. In modic one, the end plates are intact and regular, while in infection, they, are, they cause erosive destruction of the end plate. Uh, we, we discussed that on diffusion, we can differentiate uh, modic one from infection by close sign on diffusion uh, in modic while not in infection. The second case con has both modic one and modic two. See this, this is low, uh, high in T1, high in T2. This is fat, it is modic two, and suppressed on steer. While this is T1, low in T1, higher in T2, and because it is a edema highlighted on steel, this is modic type 1. Would you consider this is dry on the uh, fat side? Yes, uh, on T2. it's not desiccated. Yes. Okay. Confirming that it's a modic change, not uh, <coughs> infectious. Yes. 
vacuum phenomena when the disk fluid is all uh, empty there will be negative pressure in, inside the disk and nitrogen gas enter it it causes uh, uh, vacuum phenomena it uh, usually usually when there is vacuum phenomena it uh, excludes infection with the rare exception that rarely there may be infection with gas forming organism otherwise whenever you see vacuum <laughs> vacuum phenomena it is due to degenerative change it is uh, better seen in uh, CT and uh, X-ray spine infection whether py pyogenic or uh, TB uh, the changes are uh, easy in the vertebral body there is decreased marrow signal on T1 increased signal on T2 and erosion of end plate while in the disc hyper intense T2 enhancement and decreased height but this is not always sometimes the disc height may be normal and there may be paraspinous inflammatory tissue and fluid collection this is T1 uh, this is CT scan the, uh, in spondylodiscitis uh, erosion with decreased height whether on T1 we see the low signal of the vertebrae and uh, on T2 they are highlighted also paraspinal soft tissue and T1 uh, with contrast we see there is enhancement of the disc in plate and uh, adjacent uh, soft tissue and there is also epidural component so this is bacterial not T1 this is bacterial yes yeah. bacterial discitis yes uh, while in mycobacterial infection, they are or usually originate in the vertebral body and spread beneath the longitudinal ligament. Taban usually the anterior longitudinal ligament, more than posterior. Neighboring discs are preserved. There may be skip lesion with multiple vertebral body involved or any portion of vertebra can be involved. <coughs> this is a case of uh, mycobacterial infection. We see low, low T1, high T2. And we see contrast enhancement. We see that there is uh, an, an extension of the infection beneath the anterior longitudinal ligament. You see that the adjoining disc is uh, normal. Multiple vertebrae could be involved. One vertebra involved, one skip it, third involved. While in pyogenic, usually involve the disc and adjacent uh, vertebral bodies. At the end stage, there will be large soft tissue component uh, collapse of the vertebral body usually anteriorly and cause uh, kyphosis uh, and cause jebus uh, deformity also it has another name it's called Cotis disease and TB of spine you see how large the, uh, the uh, extra spinal and soft tissue component thank you amazing very nice yes. I think complete and thorough review of this spine diseases starting okay. from the bone marrow to the destructive uh, lesions like everything